Wildwood. Welcome to Art Masters. I'm Mrs. Portia, and I will be guiding you through today's lesson. Now, earlier this week, you should have seen some slides with Mrs. Piper about the art of the ancient Americas. So if you look behind me, here's some examples of maybe some of the things you saw. And I want you to really notice some of the colors that they used. You could see that it's a little monochromatic where they have um, some reds and browns. Some people also used uh, turquoise in that time. And some of these reds and browns, we're talking about sienna, which is the reddish brown color. And we have ochre, which is a little bit more of the yellowy, um, light brown yellow color. So we can explore with colors today. We're also going to focus on pattern. So a lot of their art, most of their art, if you noticed, and sculptures, use repeated patterns. You could see there's some lines here with the same amount of lines there. There's on one side the same animal shape, and on the other side there's the same animal shape. Even in this animal, it goes squiggle, white squiggle, squiggle. Uh, they leave a lot of space blank for contrast. So we're gonna be exploring some patterns today. So an example of a pattern you guys might do, I'm sure you've done this before, you draw a shape and you add an outline with the inside of the shape. And you can make that repeated, which makes it very interesting. Another thing um, that the Aztec and Mayan and the ancient American artists did, um, they would do a steps. So you draw a diagonal line. You guys may have done this on your worksheet. And you do, do repeated triangles down the lines, which makes it look like a step. And then you could go even further and add another repeated shape. So today we're gonna to be doing an icon, which is an image that represents something. Typically it's a simplified image. So if you look behind me, we have this animal, which could be a serpent or a dragon, but you see it's very simplified down to geometric shapes. A circle for a head, a circle for an eyeball, and a squiggle for the body. Also, if you guys did your worksheet, <clears throat> It's okay if you didn't. I'm gonna show you here. Instead of doing a very detailed dove, they broke it down into geometric shapes, which you can see I broke it down into triangles, squares, um, all sorts of shapes. So that's something that we're gonna to do today. We're gonna to be working on putting pattern into our bird. Um, the composition is already laid out for us. So what we're gonna do is be creative with repeated shapes and patterns. So go ahead and grab your bird and a black marker and we're gonna get started. Okay, so you should have your bird outline. It's already drawn for you, so you have your composition already laid out. So what we will be focusing on is the pattern, repeated shapes, and making our design interesting. Right now we're only using our black marker to draw the outline of our repeated patterns. After I go through my example, I'm going to have a slide that actually shows you some real uh, ancient American um, symbols that you could copy. And I'll also show you a couple examples if you'd like to copy. So right now, just go ahead and watch and then I'm gonna let you go forward and do yours. So we're gonna be thinking about shapes. Remember, you could turn it any way you want. Um, so right now I'm gonna do an eye because remember this is a bird. So I'm going to make a large eye with a smaller eye. Then I'm going to add a wing shape, which I'm just going to make kind of a simplified shape following along with the bird's body. You don't have to copy me. This is just something that I'm doing. And remember how we talked about repeating the outline within the shape? I'm going to go ahead and follow my line a few times to repeat that. And I'm gonna add three dots on each side just because I like it. Now I'm gonna go ahead and add some feather designs because these look like feathers to me. So I'm gonna break these up into long rectangles and then I'm gonna add some diagonal lines here to make this look like feathers. So you can see what I'm doing there. I'm not gonna finish at the moment. I'm going to cut off the feathers there. 
make another repeated shape. And now I'm gonna make a, a, another design around my bird's eye to make it interesting. I'm gonna break up this shape here. I'm gonna use lines. Just like this. And then don't forget to work on your frame. So your frame, you could get really interesting and you could use some of the symbols that I have on the next screen. Um, circles within circles. They liked to use these really interesting symbols that looked kind of like this. You'll see some examples in a moment. So go ahead and you're going to take your black pen and you're going to fill in your shapes. On the next slide, I'm going to leave an example for you to pause it on and you can go ahead and be creative or you're welcome to copy. Right now, we're just doing the black pen and we'll come back when it's time to color. So at this point, you should have all of your black lines and patterns filled in like I do here. So remember what we talked about with the ancient Americas, the colors that they used. They used sienna, which is kind of like the color of clay, a reddish brown color. They also used a lot of ochre, this kind of brownish yellow. And in some of their art, they would use turquoise, which turquoise was always harder to make, so they didn't use as much of it. So I'm going to kind of use this color palette of reds, browns, and yellow to keep it a little more authentic, but you're welcome to pick whatever colors you want. So I'm going to just start and show you a little bit and then you can go ahead on your own. So when I use one color, I like to use this color in more than one spot, which helps balance my drawing, my composition, and my design when you have the same color repeated throughout your drawing. The other thing I like to do is sometimes, especially with the, these crayons, it comes out pretty cool. Sometimes I like to color very lightly and other times I like to go in and color dark in spots. And if you see how I'm going along the spine of this feather, it's going to add some depth to my picture. So go ahead and grab your colors. And sometimes I want you to push hard and then go lightly to create this kind of gradient effect. And you're going to fill in your repeated shapes with these crayons. So I'm going to show you in the next slide here, a fast forward version of me coloring this. You're welcome to watch or pause it. And go ahead and fill in your design with your colors. Be sure to leave some space white. It's adding a nice contrast to your design. Okay, my friends, that wraps up our Art of the Ancient Americas. I hope that you enjoyed what you did. And for those of you going back to class, if your teacher hangs up your art, take the opportunity to look at each other's art and point out some positive remarks. Maybe about some repeated shapes that you see. Maybe you see some icons, uh, the bird icon or the turtle icon. Point out color and be positive about the color design and patterns. I hope you enjoyed yourself and I'll see you guys next month for Art Masters.